Hi, and welcome to What Circuit. I'm David, so I'm doing the filming for this video, and this video we're going to build one of these. So if you're like most electronics hobbyists, uh, you always have a trouble actually trying to store all the myriad of components that you need, and uh, who wants to wait several days stuff to get delivered? So, solution, storage. Lots and lots of storage. So, um, what we've built is one of these uh, drawer storage uh, rotating cabinets. We've got 16 of these drawer cabinets, all rotates around. There's about 800 odd drawers in this stack here. So, uh, stick with us and we'll show you exactly how to build it. So, what we're going to need to make this? Well, obviously, the first thing cabinets. Lots and lots of cabinets. So you're going to want multiples of four cabinets. Um, I've I already had eight of these around, so I've got another eight to make uh, sixteen, which is going to give me a height of four. Um, I would really recommend getting metal cabinets, ones with an actual metal frame, and all of mine are Rarco. Very good quality cabinets, stood up very well. In fact, all my old ones are Rarco as well. They've been around for well over a decade and it's still very good condition. Um, ideally, trying to select something you can actually get divided for, so you can use them, divide them up, because you're going to have a lot of drawers. You need you know, need an organisation system. So yeah, 8 or 16 of those, so yeah, 12 or 16 of those probably. And obviously make sure, if you're mixing old ones and new ones, make sure you've got uh, groups of four which are the same height. So how are we going to stack them? So we're going to take the cabinets, just use some bricks to demonstrate. It's going to take one cabinet like that, another cabinet there, take a third cabinet there, and a fourth cabinet across the top. So they're going to be in that, that kind of arrangement. So the advantage of this is it gives you a really uh, solid fixing without actually needing uh, anything actually inside on this corner and on this square in the middle as long as you can hold them as a, as a square shape on the outside so just to elaborate a bit I'll show you how we're going to do that one piece of stainless steel sheet so the cabinets are actually going to fit on this like this what I've done, I've just taken the edges of the stainless steel sheet and got a friend to bend these all for me, so you've actually got a lip all the way around. So what we've got, you've got about, these are 450mm on uh, the inside dimensions here, and you've got about 3mm lip. So when you've got all the cabinet stacked inside here, this gives you a really strong arrangement. So the cabinets just sit in like that. So then you have another cabinet, another cabinet, another cabinet. You see here we've got a few more holes actually just drilled and we've got one hole drilled in the centre and we're going to have a long piece of threaded rod which passes through the middle and that's just going to join the entire stack together. And they've got a group of four holes just around the inside here and we're going to use these to join these together into pairs and to join these to the top and bottom of the stack. So one of the things to note is when you drill these holes, you want these actually fairly close to the centre. The reason being that when the cabinets sit in, there's going to be a square hole left in the centre. And if you make sure your screw fittings actually sit inside this hole, then it won't affect how the cabinets sit inside this bit of stainless steel. And once you've got one or two of these made, with some more holes drilled in, you can join these into pairs. So these pairs sit in between your stacks of cabinets. So you've got one lot of cabinets down here, another lot of cabinets above. So because I'm making a, I've used got 16 drawers, which makes the stack four high. I've got three of these dividers, and one for the top, one for the bottom of the single ones. So, one of the issues a lot of people obviously you know, find it very difficult to get uh, stainless steel sheet bent up into shape. 
So I had a look at a few alternatives while I was actually looking into this, and the one which I'd really recommend, take a bit of half inch plywood and cut it to the right shape. You can actually get these pieces of aluminium angle just from uh, absolute you know, bog standard hardware stores really easy to get hold of. What you can then do is actually just cut one of these down to the right height, set it on the edge of your plywood and preferably if you can take a router and just recess this aluminium angle into the, uh, into the periphery of the plywood. And that should actually work really quite nicely without needing uh, any metal folding equipment. So whichever way you choose to do that, you're then going to want a base to sit on the uh, bottom of your stack. So I've just taken a bit of half inch plywood, used the router to cut it out into circle, and then I've drilled a big hole in the bottom. And I won't take this apart, but this is actually going to be the base of our cabinet here. So we've got the other single piece of stainless steel folded bit of sheet here. This is sat on top of a bit of plywood for reinforcement. And then this whole lot is sat on top of a Lazy Susan bearing. So this is the bit that actually allows it to rotate. It just rotates like that. And this is the kind of thing that used to be sort of quite difficult to get hold of, but now through the magic of eBay, you can find this really easily. So this is an 18 inch Lazy Susan bearing. It's not fantastic quality, it's good enough for this. Um, it cost me about 15 English pounds, so that's about what, 25 US dollars or so. And you're basically using it as is. One modification I did make was, uh, you see there's a series of holes drilled in this periphery, and another series of holes just drilled inside the inner periphery. Uh, most of these holes weren't actually drilled all the way through. Um, so what I did, just take a drill bit and drill and just extend them all the way through. It's really easy to do because it's made out of very soft aluminium. So yeah, no, no special equipment required. So then all I've done, join the base to the bearing, join the bit of sheet steel to the plier base, just using a few wood screws there. And as you can see, I've stuck a piece of threaded rod. So the way this is going to work so when we start getting uh, more and more cabinets together, I'll just start building up here. So the cabinet's going to fit on like that. So we're just going to take one of our dividers. And the whole lot then help holds together. So repeat this for multiple cabinets multiple times and you've got yourself, got yourself a whole drawer storage system. Okay, it's now for installation and assembly. So I've come over to one corner of my electronics workshop area and this is where it's going to go. So the nice thing about having it here is just directly to my left is the assembly area of my workshop, so soldering iron, microscope, all of that lot. So that means that when I'm building up um, new circuits, I can literally spin around in my chair, grab new components, you know, without even having to get up the chair or having to break off working at all. So the first thing I've done is place the base on the ground and you notice the advantage of having a circular base is it immediately tells you just how much working area you're going to need on the floor for this. If you went for just a basic square base, uh, you're going to find that as it rotates it takes up a little bit, you know, the two squares don't necessarily overlap, so you might find it catches on the wall or something. Circular base initially makes it all a lot easier. And I think it means you know, when you're moving around in the workshop, it makes it much nicer as well. So I'm going to take the assembly that we've already got. So you've got the bearing, the plywood, and one sheet of uh, sheet steel. Uh, we've got the threaded rod installed. Now the threaded rod is going to be what ties it all together. And so to lock the threaded rod in place, I've actually put two nuts on the underside, two nuts on the top. But you might notice the two nuts on the underside actually stick out uh, beyond the height of the bearing. So what I've done is just drew a nice big hole in the base of this, so that when this sits in, there we are. So the nuts actually just sit, drop into the hole uh, which is inside the base. So now it just spins quite happily. 
And the last thing which I've done, which I didn't mention before, I've actually drilled a hole through the base here. Now this hole's quite carefully aligned, so if I spin this round, it aligns with the holes in the bearings here. So this means that with this actually installed, I can put screws and the uh, impact wrench through here to be able to get this all installed onto the floor and ready to go. So, let's start building it up section by section. Okay, so point just to uh, just quick take a quick break. So as you can see, you've got uh, three layers of component cabinets in already. So what we've been doing is literally just putting in a row of cabinets, then a divider, another row, another divider, so on and so forth. Uh, because I'm just using threaded rod I had around, um, we've got these little uh, couplers we've been using just to join a few bits of threaded rod together. And just for reference, um, I'm using M12 thread rod, which is about half an inch diameter. So you can see this is starting to get pretty tall at this point. Uh, this is just uh, 12 cabinets, there's another four to go. So this is going to take me basically to the seating, and I think I might actually need a small step to get to the top of this. The bit of thread rod I've got sticking out the top isn't going to be quite long enough as it stands. So all I'm going to do is just use one more coupler. And then what I'm going to do, just, just in case, I'm going to leave a little bit of threaded rod sticking out the top. And the idea is that if um, this starts to look at all unsteady, what I can do is just run a bit of wood off to the wall with a bearing in the top and just hold the whole cabinet at the top as well. And as you see, with 12 cabinets on and a fairly cheap bearing at the bottom, there's a little bit of movement. But to be honest, for electronic components, they're not too heavy. I'm not really too worried about it at the moment, but I'm going to leave it on there just in case. So uh, just going to make one more uh, coupler up uh, over in the mechanical side, dig out the lathe and uh, get back to it and still the last cabinet. So then this is the finished product. So as you see it came out really quite nicely. Uh, very, very tall. It's, uh, obviously I worked it out before I built it but uh, still a slight surprise when you actually see it in the flesh. Um, one point about this, on stuff, unless you're very tall, stuff right at the top is going to be quite difficult to get to. And similarly, if you go right down the bottom here, because I've got shelves right down to the bottom, these are actually going to be quite awkward to get to in normal use. Even from a chair, it's just a bit more awkward. So in practice for myself, I think what I'm going to end up doing is putting the least used stuff towards the top and bottom, and I've got yeah the really commonly used stuff, so I've got yeah through hole resistors, com prototyping stuff, surface mount around the other side, all of those just in the middle, just around these middle two drawers here. Um, personally, if I was doing it with a three high stack, I using twelve cabinets, what I'd be tempted to do is actually build a slight plinth at the bottom, just to bring this level up about here, which means that the bottom drawers are actually going to be just a little bit raised off the ground, but. Spins nicely, even with a cheap bearing from eBay, and even with the four high cabinets that I've got, this really is quite steady actually. So you see there's some movement, but there's no real tendency for it to tip at all. So basically, in terms of materials, excluding the drawers, um, the sheet metal cost about £100, the bearing cost about £15, thread rod maybe £5-£10. So expenditure of about 130 plus a few bits of plywood, that's about 160, 170 pounds. Um, buy one of these commercially, that's going to set you back more like 360 pounds, including VAT in the UK. I'm sure prices elsewhere aren't that dissimilar. So it's one of the few things where I think you really can save a bit of money by building it yourself and end up something that is just as good as the commercial. Uh, so, thanks very much for watching. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you like it, please subscribe. We've got plenty more coming. Thanks very much.